people are so afraid to fail that they're going to lie to avoid being seen to fail by people that they're never going to meet that don't matter, that are going to have a negative opinion, whether they win or lose anyway. When you lie, who pays the price for that? I'm married. I, I have a wife. 19 years we've been married. We have two children, 17-year-old and 15-year-old. And... I mean, we have clients, we have a couple of businesses, we have a life, we have friends, we have family. And I've lied in my past when I, when I, before I went into the hospital for cancer and I've said it before, I thought I was killing it. And here's what's really wild is people go, I, I've never told a lie. If you're such a great person, listen, stop justifying and validating where you are and ask yourself, why aren't you where you want to be? Why don't you have the life? Why don't you, why aren't you fit? There's no excuse. Even that, my wife and I were talking about being fit. That's just being healthy. But it's been relabeled as, well, that person's really fit. That's just normal. That's a healthy human being. My, neither one of my grandparents were fat. Neither one. And they lived into their 90s, and they were both sinewy and muscular. They lived on a farm. They owned a farm. They worked all the time. Being muscular and fit is called being healthy. That's normal. To label it something different is for all the people that lie about where they are and demand acceptance for their lie, except who is suffering. Do you really think? Because it bugs me. I'm 51 years old. I've seen a lot of transitions in this life. I've seen a lot of things devolve. But when I was a kid, my dad was this muscular athletic guy until he decided not to be. It's, it's a horrible story. You know, like my, my dad was... God, he was a monster of a human being, man. He was so strong and he could swim like a fish. He played soccer better than anyone I've ever seen in my life. He could do things with a soccer ball that were just nuts. And, and he could run. He was strong. He was built like a grizzly bear. He was a huge German man. But I watched him reach into the fire burning and move logs around with his hand. There's nothing wrong. His hands were always warm in the winter, never wore gloves. I grew up in Winnipeg. It was like 25, 30 below in January and February. It sucked. And my dad was just as tough as it could be until he decided not to be. Until he started lying. He became an alcoholic. And the last time I saw my dad, it was the hardest thing. It was the hardest story I've ever had to tell about my father. The last time I saw my dad was when he and my mom came to our house when we still lived in California stayed with us and he would go outside just to quote unquote get air he was going outside to drink he had it in the rental car he just left alcohol sitting in there and then he would rinse his mouth out with mouthwatch and come in the house and think nobody noticed think nobody knew he was lying that was the last time i saw my father and the last time i talked to him was not that long after that when he was completely incoherent because he was in end-stage liver disease. And my dad died on oxygen, with IVs in him, on all kinds of medication, just trying to make him comfortable, while my mom sat there and watched him die. He was 67. So if you're about to sit there and justify why you should be drinking, or you justify why you're fat, or why not everybody needs to be fit and having a dad bod is okay and sporting that muffin top is all right. My dad died because he decided to start lying. But his lies hurt me. They hurt my wife. They hurt my mom. They hurt his friends. So who, who are you hurting with your lies, man? Like my dad took his entire life and destroyed it based on decisions that he made to go a direction that hurt him and everybody else that he cared about. So think about it. Who suffers? Who takes the brunt of your bullshit? Like some of you people out there that you lie, you get so excited about what you're going to do. You get so excited about how you're going to help somebody. For example, that's a great one because we've had this happen to us where, where we get all kinds of outlandish, outrageous, audacious promises about the help that's going to come and it's going to be this literally life-changing, world-altering event. This, this stuff that's just, gonna, it's going to be so amazing. You watch Bro, I got you kind of thing, right? It's going to be just next level. And every single week or two, it's just another excuse as to why. Well, half a year later, my wife and I went, go fuck yourself. Because you can only be lied to so many times before you, this, by the same person along the same lines, promising the same thing, who's not delivering. Well, look at yourself. Is that what you're doing in the mirror? 
because you lose credibility with yourself when you're lying. Except the people that suffer, it's not just you. And, and you can't hide from your own bullshit, just so we're clear. You can't hide from your subconscious. You can't hide from the stories you're telling yourself because when the noise of the world stops, when the cacophonous discord of the entire world that you live in ceases to exist when you're laying in bed at night in the dark and the house and everything is quiet, your subconscious starts saying, pay attention to me, listen to me. I'm gonna start calling you out on all the lies you've told and all the people you've hurt and either you have a conscience or you don't. But either way, it's not just affecting you, you son of a bitch. That's what your subconscious is gonna tell you. And you either sleep really well because you're okay with being a liar, or it bothers you and you do something about it. And most people don't. They make up a new lie to cover the lie and hurt the people even more. Do you know how disgusting it is when someone relies on you and you lie to them and it costs that person everything because they put faith in you? Like you're a shitbag if you do that. What if that's your wife? What if that's your husband, your kids? What if that's a best friend that just literally was ready to go to war for you and do all kinds of things and then turned out to all be bullshit, right? Like you have to look at what if that's you? What if that's what you're doing and your entire world is built on a house of cards? This is where we fight. This is where they die.